bullet trajectories and photographing them. Now, I'm not going to go into trajectory much, but let's talk about the photography itself. Uh, and this will be very brief because we know all the techniques. It's just a matter of putting it in context for this type of situation. So here we have rods. And normally, we uh, rods are one of the tools we can use. We can also use string. We can also use lasers. We can use computers. We can uh, just plot out where all the holes are and then let it be 3D in the computer. We can also use our 3D laser scanning tools for doing diagrams, it seems, to do bullet trajectories too. Those are the tools. Here we have some rods. And so all this is, is just documentation with photography. We're going to go ahead and take measurements. We're gonna measure where these holes are. And this is the numbering we kind of use. Uh, normally our evidence gets numbers. So anything you collect gets a number. The body doesn't get a number because we don't collect the body per se, the coroner takes the body. We're not gonna put the body in the property room and look for it in a box or something. So it does not get a number. Things that do not, uh, that we do not collect, but are notable, those get letters. So we can label uh, a couch that we're not gonna collect as A and uh, so on. So for these bullet trajectories, it's a pretty simple thing to go ahead and label each of these as a letter. So this, this gunshot here would be C, and then where it comes through the panel on the inside of this door, that'd be C1. And then on back here, there must be a C2. And then on this uh, trajectory, this gunshot would be D, and D1 is here. D2 would be on the other side of this part of the C, and D3 is where it came out. And then here's E. And basically, we just put these things together, label them, take our photographs, that along with our measurements, we've got it dialed in. Then we may have some really complex ones, uh, complex mainly, mainly being a lot of gunshots. This was the mass shooting at the Century 16 movie theater in Aurora, Colorado uh, in, in uh, 2012. These are lasers and with lasers, there's a way to photograph them. And I'm about to show you that. They didn't have enough lasers to put all these trajectories in, in one photograph. So what they also did is use these other markers as well. You see them up here and then photograph from different angles to show all of them. And then if you want to actually photograph the laser the, the itself, we can do something like this. This is a photograph with the laser on. You set the laser on the end of a rod. So the rod's pretty simple. They're just these, uh, they come in fiberglass. These are metal. Uh, then the lasers themselves can look something like this. Uh, here's one type and here's another. And then you just, on the end of the these, rods there are these little fasteners so you can actually screw more than one rod together if you want them to be longer and then at the end of the rod you can also screw in the laser so the way these lasers work the switch is actually in where this screws in when you screw this in the laser comes on. Okay, so now we see the laser. So now we have the beam. So you, you just insert this in your bullet pathway. So perhaps you have uh, bullet holes in a lampshade. You just put that in. And now uh, there are things we do. We use an angle finder, we measure the angle and we figure out the angle. We also measure the height of the bullet holes. And then if this terminates somewhere, it goes and 
lands on a wall somewhere, uh, we measure where that dot is. Even if there's no hole indicating that the bullet did not get that far, but that's part of the path. So we measure where that is. And then we have everything we need except for a photograph. So how do we do the photograph? Well, one way would be just to use strings. And strings come in different colors. Uh, so you can use ones that are a contrasting background to your background. So here's a, a kit with the different strings. And many agencies will just get yarn. Uh, it's a lot cheaper. Um, and so here's a kit with different uh, colors. And then you just string. So if you have a blue wall, you wouldn't want to use the blue string. You might use the green string or red. Uh, this one on the end over here, this is actually a reflectorized string. So it's, uh, it's white, but it has a reflectorized thread in it. And then as you take flash photographs, the string reflects that light and you have a white line to see your string better. Uh, so you could use string. And then the other way would be to actually photograph the laser. So how do we go about photographing the laser? The laser, when it's just pointed somewhere, you don't see the beam, but there's a, there's a dot, all right? So normally you don't see that in, uh, in the sky. So what we have to do is if you are the camera, I have to show you the dot. So if this is my beam here, I actually, open, you're the camera, I open the shutter, lock it open, and then I let that beam hit this card and I move the card through the picture. And I do that in the dark. And what I end up with is the laser showing as a line, as a red line. So here is a photograph using the laser. There are basically two ways you can do this. You can do it in the camera, which I'm going to describe and show you a little video on how to do it. Or you can do it by combining two photographs, one of your scene and the other of the laser beam, combine the two photographs in Photoshop. So we'll learn how to do that as well. I'm going to show you a short video. Uh, this was from a training program. Fred, we saw in the uh, scenario that they were using a, a laser for trajectory analysis. Can you explain that? Yes, a laser is a tool that can be used to determine a bullet's flight path and to reconstruct that flight path and also to determine where a bullet may have gone. I think uh, if we could see in the video, uh, we have an example where we do an actual reconstruction of a trajectory where we position where we think the person was shot. And at that point in time, uh, we expose the flash from a camera, the particular individuals. The next step as we move along and uh, after uh, the people are set up as is illustrated in the video over here, uh, the lights are dimmed, the flash is taken with a camera a couple of times to expose the individuals. After this, uh, the laser is illuminated. The problem is uh, the laser is difficult to see and has a low illumination, so we have to leave the camera open. And at this particular time, we move a white board against which the laser dot is illuminated. We move it along the path of the trajectory. When we're all done with that, we should have a picture illustrating uh, the actual photograph of the individual standing and the particular laser trajectory. I have over here, you know, a typical laser. As an example, what a laser illustrates, a laser provides a very small dot on a white background. Uh, it's a fairly accurate linear line, but it's difficult to see. We can't see any beam path. So what we're doing in a picture when we developed it is we shine, a, shine it on a white cardboard as the camera's over, then move this cardboard along, or a white piece of paper, and that exposes the path of the laser illumination. Okay. This is an example of the finished photograph where the subjects were standing, where they were illuminated with a flash from the camera, and then everything went dark, 
and the camera was exposed and the cardboard was moved and we could see the resulting uh, red path of the laser ray as it's illuminated on a photograph. What this does is basically reconstruct in this particular crime scene uh, what we assume or estimate the bullet flight path to be. So basically what they did is they set up the camera on a tripod, they opened the shutter, fired the flash to underexpose the room. Now that was their big problem. Their room really wasn't underexposed. Uh, it was pretty bright. That's why it was hard to see that laser beam. But anyway, they fire the flash. The room's already dark, right? They fire the flash to light up the room a bit. You want to underexpose it slightly. And then they move that card in front of the laser beam, making that line. And when they're all done, then they close the shutter. That's basically all there is to it. So that's uh, what we have here as well. So that's how you can do it in the camera. And, uh, you know, it just, when you just experiment a little bit, you'll find what works just fine. Uh, typically you need to have a fairly large lens opening in order to let that laser beam record. And of course, the slower you move the card, the longer it's gonna take and the brighter the beam will be. So you just experiment a few times and find out what works. Now there is another way to do this and that's by using Photoshop and uh, combining two photographs. So here we have a crime scene. First of all, just the photograph of the scene itself. And then we go ahead and take a second photograph of just the laser illumination, all right? Then you're able to combine the two in Photoshop to end up with something looking like this. Uh, and then here's another example here. All right, so how do we actually go about doing this? Well, for that, I'm going to bring up Photoshop and a couple of pictures. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to combine or blend two photographs together. So the first thing we want to do is load our images. So I want to load this one and this one. There we go. So we've got the two pictures that made up that one example I showed you a moment ago and I want to arrange these so I can see both of them. So now I have my two images here. So what I'm going to do is just simply take this image on the right and drag it over onto the other image and make them match. The camera was not moved between the two pictures. All right, so that's important. If you have moved the camera, you have to look for landmarks. So one of the things is right here, you see this little dot? Well, if we turn off that one layer, there's the little dot on the printer. So now we have two layers. We have the background. Which is the crime scene itself. And then we also have just the laser. So what we're going to do is we're now going into our layers palette. The layers palette is over here on the right. And I'm going to select uh, layer one, which is our laser. Now, what I can, I can do this one of two ways. I just click on that little drop down there. And then I click on lighten and we see what kind of result we get. So right there, that looks pretty darn good. All right, so that's one way to do it. The other way is to right click on it 
and go to blending options. Then when you go to blending options, it gives you this. So blend if gray, that's what we want to do. And we want to adjust that. So I'm going to move this over and I'm going to move this. And now it is actually blending the layer. And this way you have much more control. You can see how I've only, I don't have enough of the background gone on that laser slide. But then again, if you get too much, you start losing the detail. So I like at the top left, uh, I'm starting to lose the laser. So I can come back and try to get more of the laser showing. But one thing you look for is other places to see if you're getting any artifacts to show. So I like it right there. And so there are two ways that I just showed that you can do the overlay, the blend the two together, and then you just go ahead and save it.